Uh, but first, in a bid to attract early risers through its doors, one British pub chain has announced some of its uh, bars will be selling alcohol alongside a full English breakfast and a cup of coffee. Um, bringing its opening time forward two hours to 7 a.m., the JD Weatherspoon Group could cash in on the shift workers who've ended a long night's toil and just want to relax. Chairman Tim Martin says, I think this will be a significant boost. Many towns don't have coffee chains open at this time. Um, but how early is too early for that first drink, Alma Giffen? <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you asking me first for? <laughs> <laughs> well, do you know, I th look, you, you have to look at it logically. Now, okay. when you're going on holiday, yeah. say your flight's at, at say, 7 o'clock in the morning, yep. and you're going to somewhere like Thailand, which is seven hours ahead, that actually makes it 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So, 7 o'clock in the morning <laughs> would be quite a normal time to have a drink, because they say to you, you should change your watch to your destination time before right. you leave the country. So, so, yes, I do have a drink in the morning, but when I was in France as well, and we say about shift workers and things like that, mm. No, not everybody's on the same time. Not everyone's got the same body clock. And in the markets in the, in the south of France, I remember being there thinking, this is great. Because we'd gone um, with, a, with a chef and, you know, to get the, the food for the restaurant. And we were walking around. And every single bar was open. And almost everybody was having a little glass of rosé wine or a beer and or a little glass of champagne. It was probably 7, 7, 8 o'clock in the morning. <gasps> and it just seemed perfectly oh, that's normal. That's why you were moving to France. <laughs> <laughs> And also, I'll tell you something else I used to do, breakfast radio, and I used to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning, and you know what that's like, mm. so by 10 o'clock in the morning, it's lunchtime. Yeah. Well, so have excuse. a beer. You, you, you just excuse. mentioned something that I find just hideous and gross to look at. When you go to an airport and it's 7 o'clock in the morning, 8 o'clock in the morning, and there's a group of lads on the beer, I mean, it's no, eight o'clock, you should be drinking tea. <laughs> it doesn't matter, it's gross. It's yeah, all wrong. Oh, at I the don't airport. know. I just think, no, but it must taste horrible that time of I, morning. I, I, sure. I think our airports are almost like a timeless zone, you know, because yeah. it, it's, it's not really the real world when you're in an airport. But in terms of, you know, a regular. A regular pub opening its hours, uh, you know, uh, mm. opening its doors mm. a little bit earlier and going mm. for a tipple first thing in the morning. Mm. I know what you mean about shift workers. I mean, yeah. working in breakfast telly, yep, yeah, by the time it was lunchtime, that felt like dinner. And I very rarely met friends for dinner. I would meet them for lunch. The terrible thing is, though, you try and keep up. Yeah, that's And it's painful. awful. You, you're staggering yeah. down the street at five o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> 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 it doesn't look so bad at eleven o'clock at night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it just put you to sleep for the rest of the day. Would me, if I had a drink in the morning, if I have a drink in the afternoon, I'm gone. Well, Absolutely the, only, the only time I ever have a drink in the morning, I think, really, is Christmas Day. Don't you love that on Christmas yes. Day when you start with the box fizz with the breakfast and you move on to the sherry and you're just kind of merry all yeah. day, aren't you? And I, I sort of treasure that day, not, for, not just for that reason, but, you know, <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. but I have to say, I'm going to take my glasses off now so nobody will recognise me. I, I really, I have to say, I love a bit of a lunchtime drink. I really, do you? Well, I do. Well, especially <laughs> when I'm on holiday because then... Well, you just go to bed for the afternoon, oh, don't you? Yeah. Really? <laughs> you have the lovely lunch with a fizz and everything, yeah. and then you go for a siesta, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> be, I could be on holiday every Let's week. Really. <laughs> oh, I love it. Are you just getting a bit saucy, Leslie Garrett? I'll have to be very careful is. to remember when I'm on holiday, though, because if I do it on a work day, I get in a lot of bother. I really do. <laughs> Yeah. OK, now, speaking of a lot of bother, uh, in order to help stressed-out city workers relax, the National Trust has bottled some air from one of the UK's best beauty spots. It's hoped that when opened, each jar will give pressurised pen pushers up to ten minutes of serenity. The air comes from places including the shores of Lake Windermere and Box Hill in Surrey. So it makes a change from... Yes? Ooh! No, it's... I've been to Box Hill. It doesn't smell like that. Um, it makes a change from obviously smelling your, you know, your rather whiffy colleagues. But if you could bottle any sort of smell, what, what would you like? Or from any particular oh, place? So in the country, not in the body. Easy for me. I've just come back from being abroad. And Jake and I, when we get off the plane, I go, are you ready? And we can't. We go, one, two, three. We get off and we sniff the air. You know, like... Plain fumes, no. Um, you know, the heat, the heat of just being abroad, that oh, gorgeous yeah. smell. There's only one smell like mm. it, and we do it every time. That moment when they open the plane <gasps> doors, you Oh, and you go, oh, look, it's warm. Mm. The warm air. <laughs> gorgeous. <laughs> wonderful. What about you, Leslie? I love, though, the opposite from Zoe. I love um, the, the sort of air you get up a mountain. You know, that kind of crisp, fresh, wonderful, exhilarating air that just makes you just, I don't know, just feel 
freeze. Really cold. Yeah, no, 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 no. It is cold, but it doesn't make you cold. But it just, it just, it gives you such energy that kind of air, and oh, I it love makes that. Feel really dizzy. I always, I don't like it's it. Yeah. Healthy, it? <laughs> yeah, it's too clean. No, that's because you've had a drink before you got up there. <laughs> It does that, honestly, really. Mountain air really makes me feel a bit woozy. Yeah. Oh, I love it. It's I think that purity. Now. It's too yeah. pure for me, yeah. See, my, the, <laughs> <laughs> the, air, the air I love to smell is, like, the minute that you arrive in a city like Hong Kong or Bangkok, it is, there's that overwhelming smell of food of mixed with Smog. drainage <laughs> and pollution. Oh. And, and, no. I, I absolutely love it. And, and occasionally you'll get a whiff of a thing called durian fruit. Have you heard of durian fruit? Have you heard of it? No. Oh, it is. It, it actually smells like five-year-old rotting flesh covered in sick. It is, honestly, it's really bad, but it's a delicacy, and a lot of people really like it. And they say if you can get past the smell and eat it, it's like a you, you know, eat like, that. Well, it, yeah, you it, eat it. It yeah. smells so bad that in places like Singapore, it's even banned it's on public transport. Yeah. And this sort of stuff, because in, cl in closed spaces. It can make you gag. It's disgusting. Yeah, the signs up everywhere, oh, so you're not yeah. allowed to. You get yeah, like that. Oh, there you go. No Nigerians. No no oh, so there. <laughs> And it because it really stinks. It looks but like a hand like the city to me. And I, I just I love that smell. I love getting in uh, even the smell of the drains. I love it. I like <laughs> I like I know that <laughs> there is something wrong with you, Carol. There you, is. you know they say that you know smell is one of the most evocative of senses. I the smell of my childhood to me is you, know, you mentioned heat, because I grew up in the Caribbean. It's the smell of, I grew up on a sugar estate and it's this it's the sweet smell of sugar once oh, the cane's mm, been harvested. Yeah. And it, it's it's lying in great big piles it's either been already chopped and and sort of crunched up ready to be made into into sugar and i remember as a little girl you'd lie in bed and when the, the air was very still and then the wind would blow and you'd lie in bed and you could just smell sweet oh, air yes. it was lovely like, if I could bottle well, that you see when i was brought up i was brought up in kent which is actually the home of the, <laughs> the hops oh. where and, 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 and Sickly sweet. That's why you yes. like chocolate and I like a pine. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs>